Hello guys, Dusty here with finally another YouTube video. Yeah, you know how I said I was going to be doing more videos? 2020, man, um, it has a special way of, uh, of uh, ruining all of your plans this year, I swear. I don't know what it is, but um, that's just kind of what's happened. So, uh, what has happened to me in the last two months since you guys have seen me? Well, I... Uh, Oh my god, where do I even start? So about three days after that video, um, the last video, I was starting to feel uh, somewhat symptomatic, uh, if, if you catch my drift. Um, so I got uh, tested for the virus that uh, YouTube's Terms of Service will not allow me to name. And uh, I tested negative the first time. Um, went back and tested a couple days later and was tested positive the second time. So, yeah, I had, I had the virus. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was, that was the first half of my, first half of my August. Um, <laughs> in a nutshell right there. And then the later half of my August was, um, leaving the job I was at, starting the job I am at now, so yeah, it's just been a complete crazy mess. Um, but hopefully getting back into the swing of things. I got I can't remember if I mentioned anything about this in the last video. I'm not even sure if I had ordered it yet. But um, you guys are watching me on a new camera. Yeah, I have sort of retired the beautiful um, Sony HDR FX 1000 that I have used uh, on this channel in terms of something a little bit more simplistic that won't require post work to make the video look good. Uh, and that something was a Canon uh, EOS M50. So, um, nice little mirrorless camera here. So, really simple, really tiny. I actually have the mounting situation I have is weird here. It's mounted onto my G29 steering wheel uh, with a pull mount. So, yeah. Um, Probably going to need to do something a little bit better in the future in terms of mounting, but uh, for now it works. Uh, it operates and it functions, so hey, that's good. And you're also hearing me through the built-in audio. Eventually, I do plan on getting all my mic stuff set up, but yeah, my room is still a complete disaster area, though I have been working on things, and let me put it this way. I am, my goal by the end of 2020 is to get something decent out of this year. The 2015 Game Room Tour, yep, that's, I'm planning it, alright? The 2015 Game Room Tour should happen this year, I promise this time. I don't promise because, well, uh, you guys know how it's went the last five years. But, uh, yeah, eventually planning on that Game Room Tour. So, hopefully, uh, I will have everything ready right now. I, I actually have most of the room ready. It's just that, um... Uh, this area and this area, the most important ones, uh, aren't. So, uh, the, the most time-consuming stuff, I have to wire everything up, figure everything out on how I'm going to wire everything up. I think I have every component that I need to wire, like I've got, I'm, I'm using my XRGB3 and, uh, Sony Trinitron uh, monitor setup, which is, like, that... The picture is a game changer, man. Like when when you see something like that, it would be very difficult to go back to anything worse. So, uh, and of course, I have my new PC monitor there. I think I mentioned that in either the last or the pickup video before last. But um, yeah, um, nice new PC monitor. Still have my RTX 2070 Super in the gaming PC, um, but I do intend on getting the 3080 when someday it goes back in stock. And when they do a 20 gig version, that's probably when I'm gonna do that, but uh, just to update you guys on my awful purchase decision of a 2070 Super uh, in these times, but yeah, I've, I haven't used the card much, honestly, because I haven't had much time, but hopefully I'll have more time in the future to play more PC games. Um, fly going or whatever. Uh, so, but yeah, we have found video games, uh, a couple, actually, um, more or less found, uh, you could say. Most of these, most of these were actually finds. Now that I think about it, very few of them were actually like retail. I bought these games from a store like Pawn Shop and Goodwill. Well, Pawn Shop. Pawn Shop and Pawn Shop. 
So, um, yeah, not a ton of games here, but just figured I'd do another pickup video just so you guys know I'm not, I, like, I'm still alive. So, <laughs> but anyway, that, and I wanted to be able to figure out where I can put this thing away, which is the first video game and also the largest collector's edition box I have ever had. The Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2 uh, Collector's Edition, which comes with a beautiful, I mean, beautiful birdhouse skate deck. Like, seriously. And this thing is like a legit, it's a deck. You could you could put trucks on this and go right out skating with it. So, like, crazy. Um, like, one of the coolest things ever in a collector's edition, in my opinion. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I am going to um, put this away so I don't hurt myself. And um, it also came with the game, of course, and some DLC. And uh, in terms of the... The game itself, um, it's fantastic. Uh, I, I do really enjoy it. So it's a good return to form for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Now, um, there are some things that just don't feel right, but, I mean, all in all, it's a, definitely a worthwhile experience, and I got a lot more out of it than I was expecting. So I was expecting to buy this just for the sweet board, and uh, I ended up getting a great game out of it, too. So, But, yeah, it's absolutely beautiful board. So, man. It's pretty. So, um, yeah, that's going to go displayed somewhere uh, as soon as I find somewhere big enough to put it. Let's see, then the next up, something that I bought like five months ago. Um, because with everything going on, this is the year 2020 after all, uh, shipping has been a little not very reliable from China. So... Um, I've had to wait a little while for this, but I finally got it. It is a um, Turbo Graphics uh, flash card. It's a, it's not a legitimate one, but the thing was, it was like forty dollars. So I was like, well, I, I was, I was sent an offer thing on eBay for like forty dollars, and I was like, you know what? I'd like to get more use out of my Turbo Duo anyway. And, like, I can't justify spending $100 for a flash cart right now. So, I figure, hey, as long as this one works, it works. I'm I'm perfectly good with that. And it works. It works fine. Uh, I've played a few games with it so far and have enjoyed my playing with it. I need to figure out why my Turbo Duo does not like to work with my XRGB3. It works fine on a regular TV, but if I plug it into my XRGB3, the video on the top goes all wonky. It's something sync-related, but which is weird because it's through composite. I haven't RGB modded it yet, but, um, but yeah, now I can play every Turbo Graphics 16 game ever made on my Turbo Duo. So that's good. Very happy about that. Um, yeah. And now as far as the future of flash carts and Dusty, I do intend on getting more flash carts just because it's gotten to a point where it is just so difficult to find video games anymore. I can't rely on it. So, like, if they're, and, and, and video game prices, particularly this year, have gotten so bad, it's, it's kind of surpassed the idea of me wanting to go out and buy a game, you know, even if it's a hundred bucks, just because it's a game I really want to play and I can see the value in it, it's just harder and harder with these game prices going up. So, definitely planning on more flash carts and more flash solutions for game consoles, and, and maybe even exploring the world of emulation a little bit, too. Who knows? Um, not that I haven't emulated anything in my life before. Oh, more video games right here. I forgot about these. Um, but <laughs> it's a good thing I found those. But yeah, um, so anyway, uh, other weird pickups. Um, these ones are actually new, and they came from the internet. Um, just because I saw these on Twitter, and I was like, uh, yeah, those are so quirky, I have to own them. And they are Retro City Rampage and Sh Take Shakedown Hawaii on the Nintendo Wii. <laughs> because of course. Of course! Yeah, um, they were like, geez, they weren't even that expensive. They were like $29.99 a piece. So I was like, what the 
heck, you know. Um, the fact of the matter is, they're not going to make these forever, and they're like the last official release game. They're PAL, but I mean, they're like the last official release games we're ever going to see for the Nintendo Wii, so I was like, screw it. Might as well. It's not like, it's not like I'm going to get a better opportunity to buy... This setup still has a few things that might need to be worked out a little bit. Um, just a moment here. Come on. You can do it. Hey, there we go. Yeah, that LED light bulb that I have there. It has a very natural tone for LED light, but it does not like to stay in the light socket on my soft light, so... Kind of unfortunate. But what are you gonna do? So yeah, these are going right on the game shelf, probably to never be played because there's probably better ways to play the games. But still, it's just it's kind of a quirky thing that I like, and I like the Nintendo Wii. So what the heck? And I do have a, um, a homebrew one, so I can use them too if I if I do so decide. But anyway, <laughs> moving on to the next pick. I'm not really a video game by any means, but um. Just something that I was planning on doing for a long time. Um, Nintendo 64 end labels. Yeah, I bought end labels for Nintendo 64 games on eBay. And the reason why I did that was because I, I've noticed over the years I've played Nintendo 64 a whole heck of a lot less than I used to. So, um... I guess what it comes down to is the reason why I've played so much less of it is because it's so difficult to find the game. So more of them you get, the harder it is to manage. I have a over 100 and 110, I think, Nintendo 64 games now, and, like, trying to dig through them to find the one you want is, like, needle in a haystack. I mean, you can alphabetize them, but even that gets a little wonky. So, yeah, I've just... I, I've just figured on going the buy $17 um, end labels on eBay. And they actually, they don't look too bad. I mean, they're not perfect by any means, but... They look good on the games there, if you can see them, if the camera will focus. Yeah, the focus on this camera is really nice. Like, it just, it doesn't skip a beat. Like, <laughs> this is fun. Look at that. Look at that. I have it set to face focus, and it'll just, it'll focus on whatever I put in front of it. It's crazy. Like, this this Canon dual autofocus that the kids talk about nowadays is just... It's, it says the kids say lit or something. So, um, let's see. Moving right along. By the way, I, I did have these games before, but um, I just wanted to show you guys the game labels. That, and I, I didn't know I had this <laughs> until I went through putting the end labels on. Which, I put them on all my games, too, so it's all good to go. Um, but yeah, didn't know I had this. So, it's, it's like a 60 70 ish dollar game. I'm assuming this one isn't because the label is... Uh, it's seen better days, but, eh, you know, it's better than not having the game, so I'll take it. Then we got some random GameCube games I found around the house that uh, did not make it into a pickup video, to the best of my knowledge. Minority Report on the Nintendo GameCube, which I didn't have, and it's a GameCube game, so of course I bought it. And then Finding Nemo, which is a lot better condition than my copy. It was $2. Both of these were $2, so went ahead and picked them up. Um, let's see. Next up on the itinerary for this pickup video, some um, some pawn shop Nintendo Entertainment System pickups. Yeah, that's right. Um, we found we found some Nintendo Entertainment, like a ton of Nintendo Entertainment System games at the pawn shop. But of course, we're not in the golden age of finding video games anymore, so they were mostly overpriced. But I did find a couple that I was like, yeah, I can justify paying this for this. Um, so just kind of going through those. We got, um, I guess one of the stars of the show here, uh, Mega Man 3. It was only 15 bucks, so, which is a lot for me for a NES game, it's just the way I am. But, uh, I mean, you know, it's usually about a $25, $30 game, I'm pretty sure, so figured to go ahead and go for it. Then the rest were kind of just around what they normally retail for, but, I mean... They're games that I wanted to have anyway. So we got Bionic Commando for the NES. It was 10 bucks. You can probably buy a $10 copy on eBay, but it was clean enough. That was the same thing like that. Uh, then this one uh, was five Solar Jetman. Because why not? Five bucks. 
And then we got another $10 one, Dig Dug 2. I love Dig Dug, so I wanted the Dig Dug 2 port on the NES. And then Road Blasters, which was $8 for whatever reason. And probably about what it's worth, but it was a clean enough copy. That I was like, yeah, you know, might as well go ahead and grab it. And then I bought this just because it's like, I think it was $5. I, I took the label off of it for obvious reasons. But the cleanest copy imaginable of Wheel of Fortune on the, on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Like, this is like... This is like, I bought retail games less clean than this. <laughs> it is just like 110%. Like, wow. It is like, it's like a brand new game, really. I mean, it's, it's got the manual in there. It's got, it's got a poster. Nice poster there uh, that I'm not going to unfold. It's just in such good shape. Oh my goodness. It's got the dust cover, again, of course, too. And like, it's got, it's got everything, you know? And it's like a perfect condition copy, so I was like, I couldn't really pass that up. So, but yeah, that's pretty much those NES pickups that I picked up, and like the total ended up being like around fifty bucks for one, two, three, four, five, six NES games. But you know, I'm sure I'll get some joy out of a lot of these titles. Um, I'm trying to close this without damaging it, so. It is that, it is that tight of a fit that is like actually difficult to close. So yeah, um, I probably should have taken the game out first too. Um, because I'm going to just put this on the shelf because I don't like opening and closing these boxes because I like to keep them in good shape. So what the heck? This is, this is being difficult with me, sorry. I know I'm wasting pretty much all of your guys' days trying to close a box, but there we go. Okay. Couple more games. So we got this one, which uh, I had ordered a long time ago, and I found it in my living room um, in a package, so I'm assuming I just ordered it, forgot I ordered it, got it in the mail, got something in the mail, I was like, ooh, I got mail. Brought it into my house, and then it just kind of knocked around for a while. It was hiding under something or something. I don't know. I, I found this like a month ago. But <laughs> it's Rune Factory Special Archival Edition for the Switch. Which, what does this come with? Uh, it comes with special game enhanced with HD graphics, newly wed mode bonus stories, and an additional difficulty level. A full color 162 page archival book with artwork from the Rune Factory games, plus exclusive promo and comic images. An original soundtrack CD with 36 music tracks from the RuneScape Factory 4 special. Download code for Swimsuit Day bonus content. There we go. So yeah, that's all you need. Um, yeah, no wonder I bought it. So yeah, um, though I know nothing about this series or anything of that nature, and unfortunately the box is not in great shape, is what it is. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna really stress myself out over that one. But what are you gonna do? So, um, then we got two more things here, and then I will leave you guys alone. Um, the first one we have is it just came out last week. Um, and I was debating on buying this or not. Um, but I decided to go ahead and do it, and that is because I figured, what the heck. Being able to play these games portably will be fun, and I'll finally be able to actually beat Super Mario Galaxy. So you probably know what game it is now. It's the Super Mario 3D All-Stars Collection. I'm going to hide behind my camera here because it wants to focus on my face. I should set it to multi-point. Just a note to make, but yeah. Super Mario 3D All-Stars. And yeah, it's, um, it's a game so far, is my review of it. No, but... Um, it doesn't control very well. <laughs> like, when you are used to precision controllers, like... And don't get me wrong, I like the Switch controller. Heck, I even like the Joy-Cons. They're just not designed for games like this, unfortunately. So it just doesn't control very well. And Nintendo didn't do games. Like, honestly, I kind of regret buying it. Um, I usually don't regret buying games. I definitely usually don't 
regret buying Nintendo games. Uh, but yeah, I just I feel like this is the most soulless thing I've ever seen in my entire life, and I uh, feel a little guilty for rewarding Nintendo's behavior on it. But um, like seriously, they didn't give any GameCube support. The menu doesn't even align. Like if you want to wind back to the like go through the whole entire list and then go back, you have to go all the way back. Like you can tell Nintendo threw this together in like five minutes. They were like, "Oh, Nintendo uh, Mario's turning 35. What do we do?" Uh, we give him the stupidest birthday gift ever, which doesn't even include Super Mario Galaxy 2. So, yeah. There you go. I mean, that's that. I mean, I'm not going to complain too much about it. I've gotten... I mean, I've gotten 80 stars on Super Mario 64 already. If anything, it's a nice new challenge playing with a controller that doesn't have uh, notches in the cardinal and whatever you call the ones in between cardinal directions. So, yeah, what are you going to do? So, um, then the last pickup that I've got here um, was, it, it had something to do with my, uh, my health situation, um, to, to put it in terms. Uh, originally when this was, when I heard this announced, I was like, I'm probably not going to buy it, but it looks cool. And then I was starting to get symptomatic and I was feeling like, okay, well now I'm going to be home with the virus for two weeks at least. I need something to occupy my time. <laughs> um, so little did I know I ended up actually sleeping just about the entire time. Like seriously, I can't remember uh, that first whole half of um, August, but that is what it is. But it is the <laughs> Lego Nintendo Entertainment System. Yeah, um, it's quite the adorable thing. Like, you got a little Lego controller and you got a little Lego thing. And it has a Lego TV too, but I haven't finished building that yet. But yeah, this is pretty much my first two days of quarantine. And then um, the rest of them, I was asleep. So, and it even has a nice little NES cartridge that you can put the sticker on. But I'm not going to put the sticker on because because I'm a weirdo. Um, but yeah, it actually it's like really fun to play around with. Um, my cartridge doesn't stay down, but I think that's probably just because I built it wrong. Um, but yeah, um, really really nice little bit of thing. Uh, the only thing was it was uh, it was missing a piece. But um. <laughs> I don't know if that's a common issue with Lego sets nowadays, but yeah, it was it was missing one piece, but luckily I could switch around a couple pieces, and it, you can't tell the difference from the outside. Oh, and there's also this little cool little Easter egg, that if you take the side off of it, it's level 1-2. Isn't that cool? Isn't that the coolest thing? I, I want to make sure to focus on this so you guys get it. And I just knocked the camera over. But yeah, kind of neat, I felt anyway. But yeah, that's pretty much going to be this pickup video. So I'd like to thank you all for watching. And I did also, oh, another kind of sort of pickup thing. I did pre-order the PS5. And I pre-ordered the Xbox One. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep my Xbox One pre-order. I just did it just in case I changed my mind. Uh, I pre-ordered it, but... I just, I don't know. Um, I just don't know if there's any reason to own one, to be honest. Uh, but... Or Xbox Series X or whatever. But yeah, P or PS5 I'm excited for. And the primary reason why I have decided to do that is because it's backwards compatible pr with pretty much every PS4 game. And the fact of the matter is I would like to keep my uh, PS4 500 million edition in really good shape. So um, I would like to put that back in its box and put the PS5 under my TV. I figure it kills two birds with one stone. Um, and yeah, I've, got, I've gotten quite a bit of use out of my PS4 too, uh, and don't want to like, you know, it, it damage it, uh, by using it or, you know, leaving it to the elements because it, it is a really cool special edition, like, and, and they didn't make a ton of them. They made like 50,000 of them. So I'd, I'd like to keep it, you know, safe and, uh, something that I can have for future, future times to come. I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty much been dusty. Is there anything else I have to go over? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Look look forward to hopefully having a game room tour before the end of 2020. I'm planning on doing gamer, a game house tour. 
Like, that's that's the difficult part. The game house tour. I have to get my house all ready for basically showing you guys all of my garbage. So, um, that includes, for those of you who watched my record collecting videos, all my records, all my CDs, to my tapes, and my anime collection that I don't think anybody's ever seen yet other than me. So, um, yeah, uh... <laughs> I don't think I've ever done any anime-related videos, but you know, I'm a fan of Japanese animation, so uh, or Japanimation, uh, as it as it can be called. But uh, anyway, this has been Dusty. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments. Um, let me know in the comments if you guys are planning on getting any of the next generation consoles and why you're going with the console you're going with. See, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing the YouTube call to action thing where you can increase user engagement uh, and in turn uh, make more uh, views happen, I guess. I don't know. YouTube wants me to do it, okay? Is, you can't you can't see it, but there's a guy from YouTube with a gun off the side of the screen. Like, ah! No, I'm joking. Um, but... <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> make sure to smash that like button. No. Uh, but yeah, this has been Dusty. <laughs> this has gotten to be a strange video. This has been Dusty. Thank you guys for watching. It's good to be back. Hopefully going to be doing more videos soon. I've got this camera going, so as soon as I get a proper mic set up, unless this mic sounds really good, then I might just do the PSP collection video uh, with it. But yeah, you know, it just kind of depends on that but anyway thank you guys for watching and i will see y'all next time hopefully very soon take it easy